What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through this, and I would love you guys um, to kind of, especially if you struggled with the first question, turn for me in your book, those of you that are streaming in online, you guys can turn to your books tomorrow or when you download it this afternoon, to page four. Page four. It says there, how to determine the equation of parabola specifically. If I look at what we started with this morning, the monkey and the mountains, I'm going to start, ladies and gents, by first asking myself, where do I want to go? And I want to get to a point where I have y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. That's my monkey. That is the real thing I want to solve. So no matter what I do, that's where I'm going towards. Now, excuse me, the question is, what are the mountains? Well, the coefficients. So A, B, and C are my mountains. So I have to try and get that one, that one, and that one. Those are my three mountains. But now the question is, how do I do that? Now, on page four, it says, when you determine the equation of a parabola, you've got three methods. Number one, either you've given the x-intercepts, or number two, you're given the y-intercepts, or number three, please, I hope and pray you never get to do this in the exam, three random coordinates. Because then you've got to solve simultaneously. And that is a big mission. I've never seen them ask it because it's just too much. So if I look at this, what was given to you in that scenario? It says here, I unfortunately seems like I left out a little bit of information there on the sketch. Sorry for the guys who signed in and were stuck. Sorry about this. The bit of information that they gave you was that A is the coordinate, 3 comma naught, and B is the coordinate, 7 comma naught. Now you've got to ask yourself, why is that important? Why is it important? Because those are the x-intercepts. So now if I narrow it down to one of those three, I'm going to go automatically that I'm going to go to the formula y equal to a x minus x1 x minus x2 and that is going to be x1 and that's going to be x2. So now the thing is x minus 3 x minus 7. And this is just something, a nice little side note you can write down. When you are determining the equation of a graph, there's always three steps. And these three steps will come and help you if you're struggling with this section. The three steps are as follows. Number one, write down or read off from the graph what you can. Is there something in that graph an A, a B, or a C that I could just read off? And the answer is no. Then the second thing is, go to a formula. In this case, the right formula would be this one. Because I'm given the x-intercept. The step three is sub in and coordinate. If you can't read off, you can't use a formula, sub in a coordinate. What other coordinate did they give me? They gave me E as 6, 6. So therefore, I'm going to sub in 2X and Y. I'm going to warn you guys. They, have, they love this. They give you, say, a hyperbola. They give you a hyperbola. And you are so used to reading off the asymptotes. But then they are sneaky. They don't give you an asymptote. But they give you a random other coordinate. And then you guys freak out. 
But sir, I can't do this. I never in my life have I ever not been able to read off from a graph. So what? Sub in and solve. If you can't read off, sub in and solve. So I'm going to sub in y with 6 and x with 6. Okay? And then I'm simply going to solve for a. Oh, I am in too much of a hurry. I apologize. Okay. So this gives me two, three, sorry, I'm already going to the answer. So three, and this gives me negative one. So this gives me negative three a. So a is negative two. Please, 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 does it make sense? So how would I know? Guys, is that a smiling or a sad parabola? It's a sad parabola, so it has to be a negative A. Please does, make sure your answer makes sense. I've seen it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to finish off with this. We'll do B2 and 3 quickly tomorrow morning. Guys, your answers have to make sense. Because I mark matric exams at the end of the year, in AP Math specifically. And I mark the finances section. And then we have kids who are trying to work out the installment on a house. Let's say a 500,000 Rand house. And then we get answers over 20 years that kids say 120,000 Rand per month. Does that make logical sense? No ways. But we get that. And then we, we say, but how do you write it down, but you don't think about it? But that's a different question. Now I've got A, and I'm going to finish off here. A, Y is equal to negative 2, X minus 3, X minus 7. Again, I want an equation. So I want this, but not this. So what must I do? Just multiply out. x squared, again that 3, I'll get it right. x squared minus 10x plus 21. And if I multiply this out, it's negative 2x squared plus 20x minus 42 and that is my y value, my y equation. Have I answered the question? But what if they asked me for the values of a, b, and c? I read it off. a is negative 2, b is 20, and c is negative 42. Ladies and gents, I encourage you guys, go and look for that monkey behind the mountain. Go and look for the problems and all the obstacles before you just run into the questions.